Welcome to Depths of History. I'm here to present a new video to y'all today. Um, but this actually isn't about me, it's about my friend Jay. Um, I've been detecting with Jay for around two years now, and together we found many Civil War relics, uh, Native American artifacts, and colonial artifacts together. But this is basically going to be a video describing his collection, uh, so I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for 17,000 subscribers as well, and we'll show you the collection. Hey guys, my name is Jay. You've probably seen me on Britain's videos, Depths of History. So this is my whole collection so far. I've started back in 2012. I was a novice. I was using like a, I think a mine lab musketeer, metal detecting my neighbor's yard, uh, and they have a pasture. And I went up and down the whole field, and the first find that ever got me interested in metal detecting was this 10 carat ring, and uh, that was after a four hours or three hours of detecting, gritting out the field, digging aluminum cans, every signal basically. And then this is the last find of the day. Then here's the rest of my jewelry so far. Silver rings, a lot of junk on the bottom, but all the top is all the precious metal, silver, and then my one gold ring. And then a tooth cap found at the beach. Some other odds and ends, a US Sun and Service, I was found um, locally here too. Most of it's from the beach and park detecting, like these two rings got me started off after this one. And then a, a marksman's badge. It's from World War II, right? Yep. I don't know really where to start. I guess I started detecting door knocking my local city. Most of this is from troop movement around, around here. Some carved bullets cleaner bullets up in here. These are all found near my house actually too. Flattened bullets carved and field. And then property I've been going to since I first started is in this display box right here. That was actually the first arrowhead I've ever dug in my backyard. Um, I believe it's a Kirk, probably wrong. But then if you look over here, these are the rest that we've, me and Burton have excavated. And these are all in his backyard. It's like a, it's like a pretty small area near the creek in his backyard. And we're just digging out some fire pits, and they're they're rough shape, but they're arrowheads, so mainly quartz, a little bit of flint we find them about a foot to three foot down and you find ash in the ground where they had a fire. These are from the video of Britain that we haven't posted yet so yep. just some, some little chi quartz chippings but it's a lot of chippings. Ten, par ten pound parrot shell, the base of a parrot shell. Um, this is actually my first plate I ever dug found it a foot away from the road. Beautiful sword belt plate. Missing the clasp on the back, the hook. It's still in good shape. And then purchased that, that's a US box plate. Still on my bucket list. And then a breastplate. I had, didn't find that, I bought that at the local Tennessee show that me and Brynn went to. But the rest, this is I think my most interesting find. Yeah. A CSA uh, Nashville Plowworks sword, uh, the the hilt of it, and then the matching part I found a hundred yards away in an adjacent pasture. That's but awesome. That whole sword would have been worth how much? Seventeen thousand dollars, but you know, in good condition, but <laughs> still interesting. Still amazing. How it broke? Probably a plow hit it. Unfortunately, maybe the other parts of the sword are scattered out there, but haven't found them. Two bullets connected with a rivet. It's interesting what soldiers would do in their free time. Maybe a modern day fidget spinner, who knows. Um, some nice arrowheads that I've dug in my backyard. And then, I don't know, a cow tag, but it has a star on it. 6-8 or 8-9, however you look at it. Don't know. It could be a cow tag, could be something else, could be a large scent that was carved, but 
This is our recent trip to South Carolina with Britain. 69 caliber bullet, pipe stems, a lot of flat buttons. Tons of flat buttons. It's a nice arrowhead. Um, I think my favorite find out of this whole box, it's not in this box. So I think that's my favorite find from the South Carolina trip. 1815, half real. Beautiful. It's really small. It's awesome. It's in good shape. That's, I mean, for my first real, I can't complain. Definitely. Half real. And then the rest of it, also from South Carolina, 1854. Seated half down. I'll put this down so you can focus on it. We don't find that stuff up where we're at. We rarely find silver over here, just lead and iron. Uh, here's another interesting find. It's a love token. Hand carved. I think I think that's got to be from at least 1850s, 1856. January 3rd, 56. Yep. Don't know if it's 19 or 1856, but who knows? Some other odds and ends. Just some mercs. We, I don't find much silver, so it's always nice when I do. The glare is really bad. Nice either way. Yep. And bullets and frags. He's uh, done a good job of preserving these and also a very nice bayonet. You might remember that from. Oh, me and Britain doubled up in one day. Yep, we both dug bayonets in one day. Um, just some lead sabot. Shinkle shell. A lot of parrot shell pieces. Um, there is a toy cannon right here that I found in my local city. And it would actually fire too, I think. And there's a hole right there. I haven't cleaned it out. It's made out of pewter, so it's really, really fragile. A lot of wheat pennies. Harmonica reads. Odds and ends. But And if y'all have any questions about, you know, what something is, Jay and I can help in the comments. Or if you can help me identify some stuff like this right here. I was thinking it was a, the top of like a compass because it does have U.S. on it. It's really in rough shape. Might have to take a picture and post it uh, to show better detail. Yeah. Uh, I actually found this huge round chunk of lead right next to that, the road where I found my Union uh, sword belt plate. So maybe they use this to make bullets. Could be a picture frame holder pocket or a pocket watch. Missing the inside of it. These are from recent stuff on the bottom is from recent videos. Me and Britain found a, a Union campsite where we found a bunch of drop bullets, melted bullets, tons of drops, yep, and then everywhere. where we found the that the Civil War, the Confederates running away from the Union that field. And we found all the dropped in fields. The CSA drop theory. Yep. And so the saddle. Uh, shield with the lead inside. Shoe tap. Yeah. So that's a bugle mouthpiece or trumpet mouthpiece. That's awesome. It has some writing on it, silver plated. Got hit by a lawnmower, I suppose. Yep. And that was found at the same site. I'm trying to find, gather my bearings here. It was found at the same site where I found this confederate, um, a bayonet scabbard. A bayonet scabbard, yeah. And some other, a uh, bunch of parts of the knapsack and rivets and odds and ends. It's right next to a railroad too, so there's a flattened coin. Don't know if it's an Indian head or a wheat penny. And then this is confederate. It has the letters 6, 7, uh, zero, 9. And then I don't know if I think it has an A on it, so it's the second batch from England of Enfields that they shipped over. Uh, rifle band found at the same site. This is in a recent video. We dug that in a creek, another bayonet scabbard. Some bullets and wood. 
Yep, had those preserved. Some greens, green bullets. Got the green carbon. This is a beautiful, beautiful butt plate. Yeah, perfect shape. Don't know what this is. Could be a flag, the top of a flagpole. If y'all have any idea what that is, let us know. The star, the car, car bullet, that was carved into a star in one of our videos from the past two years. Soldier took his time on that one. And then here's a nice box of drops. The top here, some dropped end fields, and then some fired at the bottom. Here's the Selma bullet, right there. Down in Georgia, pretty rare. Rarities would be this bullet right here. Bullet in wood, two bullets actually in wood that hit each other. We need to preserve the wood still, but. Yep, is that a, a three ringer and a Williams cleaner? Yep. Just mashed together. Still some of the wood intact. That's about it. I mean, there's a, a sword hand, handle right there in part of it. I believe you told me. That's exactly what that is. I thought this was a piece, part of a um, the inside lead of a plate, uh, just based on the curvature on it. Um, he's got a lot of bullets here, though. And then some, while you're standing here, some buttons. Mostly, um, New York button and um, infantry button, eagle eye. Buttons don't come up pretty here. Well, at least the ones I dig, they're all. Lock plate. Lock plate, car bullet, uh, chest bullet, and then a uh, phallic bullet. A phallic bullet. But those are awesome. Skeleton key, this is all at the site that I showed you here. A number of things come out of the site, the Union and Confederates camp there. Oh yeah, here's another butt plate from that same site. So I found the Confederate numbered butt plate, this one, all this stuff, all this stuff, and then we went, I went detecting today. Yep. Jay got to go out detecting without me. And he found a nice lock plate and some uh, two sharps bullets, two musket balls, and a nice 52 caliber three ringer and a pocket knife. Pretty, pretty good day out. It's a pretty good sight. It's a lot of, a lot of trash. It was a home built in the 1920s there, and they pitched all their trash out. So you find a lot of uh, aluminum cans and stuff, but you got to dig trash to get the treasure. These are actually from my, my neighborhood. The, the only 69 caliber bullets I found in Georgia, three of them, and then a dropped Enfield, back of a, a button, and then a Washington State tax token from 1935 in my backyard. I don't know why. We also got, I don't think we've ever done a close-up on this ring that we found, that I found. Oh yeah, that was with Nick when we were out there. It was all in one day got to be like an emerald or some sort of stone I'm not sure but a signet ring but no initials just an emerald broken off at the back found amongst all these bullets there was very little trash there so that's Maybe, yeah. that's I'm hoping that's period but who knows could be could not be lock plate cover don't find many of those and the rest is just the typical typical bullets. Civil War relics. Here's a nice flint arrowhead. I mean, these are all dug in my backyard. I just haven't put them in cases, nicer cases yet. A scraper. That's a nice, yeah. Quality piece. Interesting flint on it. I love, I love this one. I think this is. Even though you know it's kind of bulky, it's still nice. Yeah, it's not finished. They they just it was a piece that that could have been, but they just didn't finish working on it. 
really some of these are actually my first bullets I ever dug in here first gardener rough shape all nice. bent up so this is also interesting it's a pewter canteen spout, canteen spout and uh, has a U carved into it probably can't pick it up but yeah, very it. nice initialed canteen spout rough shape but I don't know what it is you might know what it is mm -hmm. Britain thinks, I don't know if you can pick it up, but it could be a Civil War belt. But it does definitely look period. I mean, that leather does look very It was period. hanging on a log. It just rained heavily, so the creek flooded, came back a few days later, and this is literally hanging on a log. But it's very fragile. I found this, I don't know, four years ago three years ago so it's been in storage for a while but you can get a close-up on these seams here yep could be Civil War belt I don't know I don't know how it survived this long yeah especially the leather I mean it's super brittle but I mean there's a bunch of rivets in it I don't know if here's a rivet that already fell out I don't know if they have this many rivets in the belt, I guess, in their belts, but if any of y'all know what it could be, or if it's period at all, let us, let know. us know. Well, I also used to collect uh, helmets from, from World War II. Um, it's a Luftwaffe helmet, single decal, the leather is still intact in the inside, and the paint's pretty good on it. Don't know how well it comes up on the camera, but that's one of my best helmets. I have two of these British helmets here. They look like the Doughboy helmets of World War I. The leather is still intact. This is a Spanish-German helmet, so the Germans made it for the Spanish during World War II and post-war. Uh, this is my father's when he was in the Navy, his lieutenant's hat. And then in there are some Civil War binoculars. I don't know why, but they look good next to each other. A pestle for grinding stuff. Grinding foods and fits perfectly in the palm of your hand. It's but nice but one. pretty interesting. And then the last of the helmet collection, another World War II. British helmet with the field dressing still in the netting. Don't know if that's original or not or is put there, but still has a leather liner. A Viet Cong helmet. This thing's funny. It is. Helmet <laughs> Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. Even with the badge still on it. But it's in pretty good shape for, for what it is. And then and of course U.S. helmets. This one I think has a repro cover on it, but this one is original. Yeah, it's definitely a repro. And uh, that's about it. Guys, thank you for taking a look at my collection. Uh, there's going to be plenty more videos coming up of me and Britton digging some artifacts. That's right, and we're going to continue the hobby of metal detecting and continue to metal detect old home sites, Civil War sites, and many more things that come our way, including arrowhead digging in the backyard. That's the next video to go up, Yep. hopefully. So until then, stay tuned, like and subscribe, comment if you have any questions, and we'll see you at the next one.